Right over that. I just didn't even want to look at that. <laughs> we'll go back to the benefits piece. <laughs> So, Madam Chair, KCCA uh, is um, involved in the Conservation Ontario's Group Benefits Program. Um, and so what I wanted to update uh, in this report is the impact of that to the, the uh, budget coming up. Um, the program is, so two things uh, for this report. The program is changing effective January 1st, 2018, um, and also to report on the increase um, that's effective September 1st, 2017. Um, so there are some decreases uh, in the coverage coming up uh, January 1st, 2018. Um, and those uh, decreases are detailed in the report in, in I think, laid out uh, hopefully well in, in the report. Um, the decreases in the coverage was a way of that um, the, the committee that looks after uh, the benefits package on behalf of all the CAs that are involved in it. It was uh, seen as a way to modernize uh, the program uh, by the introduction of what uh, the healthcare spending accounts, and maybe some of you um, are already up to speed on what those are. But basically, it's a it's a pot of money that's set aside uh, for each of the employees. Um, they can spend it to offset any healthcare cost uh, that the program isn't isn't funding uh, currently. So if you go to the dentist and you have um, at checkup, uh, usually our benefits would have covered 100% of that checkup. Uh, starting January 1st, they'll cover 80% of it. Um, you could, if you wanted to, if you don't have um, a, a matching plan with your spouse, uh, that 20% you could expense to your healthcare spending account. So you could um, bring it up to the 100%. Um, or that healthcare spending account is basically there for you to spend it as you as you wish. Um, so if you uh, wanted to do an extra visit to the massage therapist and um, the be the standard benefits plan isn't um, covering it, you could draw those monies out of your healthcare spending account. Another example would be um, right now the plan uh, covers uh, I think. Eye care every two years, uh, so a pair of glasses every two years. If you wanted, you broke your pair and you needed another pair in between that, you could draw out of those funds out of the healthcare spending account. Um, so the healthcare spending account is, is really becoming a, a standard part of most benefits packages, uh, but in order to uh, cover that cost, you see uh, decreases in other aspects of the healthcare of, of the plan. Um, so for us, it means a change uh, in uh, our paramedical coverage, moving from 100% to 80%. Uh, there's actually an increased, a slight increase in the combined maximum uh, for preventive and basic uh, dental care, moving from 1500 to 1750 annually, um, but then a, a decrease in benefits in terms of preventative and basic services. So before, the, again, the coverage was 100%, it's moving to 80%. A major dental moving from 80 to 50. Uh, so in some of those categories, uh, there is a you know a, a significant decrease, especially if you don't have um, a, a spouse with benefits that you can do the co-insured option. Um, the way the committee was looking at it is that they were offsetting those decreases with the introduction of the health care spending account. Um, and hopefully that you would see a decrease in the overall cost of the benefit plan and then you could use those funds to uh, put into uh, money for the healthcare spending accounts. Um, what actually has happened uh, with, with the authorities' plan is they were uh, initially projecting a, a premium increase of 11 to 15 percent, which had me nervous for a couple of weeks. Um, but they were able to negotiate that down to an overall increase on the entire plan of 3% with KCCA's negotiated rate change of slightly, just slightly lower at 2.6%. Um, so despite the changes that they're proposing to the program, there's still a slight increase this year, but nothing to what they uh, were originally coming out with um, early on in the negotiations. Um, so the, 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 um, 
recommendation that I presented uh, in the report is um, that the report would be, be received and that staff be directed to explore the option of introducing the health care spending accounts and report back as part of the 2018 um, budget process. Uh, so the health, again, just the health care spending accounts, that would, that's a decision. It's not a core part of the, of the um, benefit package moving forward. Each authority would decide whether or not they want to introduce that, whether they have the funds available to introduce that. Um, and what it usually is a decision, there's a minimum of $50 per employee to get into that health care spending account. Um, an annual deposit is required by January 1st and the administration of the plan is, is handled uh, by the benefits provider. Um, so I, I would at least like um, the opportunity to see if I can uh, fit a healthcare spending account in uh, to the budget without any, any impact um, to the levy or the proposed levy increase. Um, so that, you know, I guess my point is there is a, a decrease in, in the benefits um, as proposed. Um, and it's, and for some people who don't have a spouse that is insured, it would be a significant increase, especially if that health care spending account isn't there to offset some of those costs. So we're not, uh, the recommendation is not to approve it, it's just to look at it at this point. So they uh, bring a proposal back for the board. Yeah. So questions, comments from board members? Just, I would say uh, just that it would be a good thing to find out the facts, like what are their costs and so on. Yeah. It, it's not uncommon uh, right now in benefits to have the coverage decreasing. And we're decreasing benefits because the premiums are going up dramatically. And that's the only way we can afford those premiums anymore is to decrease that. So if there's another way that is uh, beneficial that we can afford, then we should at least look at what the opportunity is and decide at that time. Well, it's interesting, some of the medical expenses, like in my case, I wanted to have a, a, an annual check-up, and you know why I have to wait three years, you know, in order to have it covered under OHEPN, which is just absolutely, yeah. you know, mind-boggling to think that, you know, they want to get one a medical for a three-year period. Yeah. Okay, so we have a, a recommendation. Can I get a mover and seconder on that to Dave and Steve? Any further questions or comments? We're just asking them to come back and report back on what it might look like. All right, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Now, Dylan? Yeah. Okay. Joe, I'm betting this is you. No? No! Wow, it's about a bridge, and I thought it would all be, I thought Joe would be handling this. Oh. Together. Yes. Together. Okay. With Jennifer. Oh, yes. So, our lead will. Go ahead. Um, Madam Chair, we do have a proposal that has been submitted by BT on behalf of the city in terms of a uh, preliminary proposal of what they're proposing for the bridge construction down at Dalewood. Um, staff have done a preliminary look at that and uh, we're requesting tonight the board's approval uh, to seek uh, some input from our, our standard engineer, uh, so Riggs Engineering, to have uh, look at that and provide uh, some input for staff as they review that. The, the documents are highly technical and we, it's not unusual for us to go out and uh, seek um, some professional advice on a on review such as this. Um, in terms of costs, we're probably looking at about $2,500 uh, to have that initial review and give some staff some guidance in, in terms of input that we would provide back uh, to the city. Um, that's certainly uh, sustainable in, in our budget. There's uh, funds available for that. Um, I am proposing tonight that Riggs uh, take a look um, at the proposal. Uh, he's our, our standard engineer, um, is most familiar with the Dale with Dam, uh, who we've uh, looked to before for reviews of, of this nature, and is also familiar with uh, Joe's uh, regulation uh, program as well. We don't have the in-house specialties. We don't have so the in-house specialties. What we do? Answer some of those questions. Yeah. If I could just to add, I think the only other thing to consider is it's not necessarily for the regulation side. It's also for the landowner side for the protection of the dam. It is primarily more for the, the interest that we kind of reported on in the uh, report of the last meeting. Okay. Marcel. 
to you, Madam Chair, to staff. I thought that in our motion that we passed at our last meeting or two meetings ago that we were approving engineering plannings go ahead and those costs were going to be sent to the city. What am I missing here? Madam Chair, not entirely. The, the letter that went back to the city said that we reserve the right to um, have an engineer look at the, the cost and possibly have an engineer on site as the, the bridge uh, work is occurring and that we would be looking for those costs to be covered by the city. Um, what I'm asking for tonight is basically I need to provide comment back on a preliminary proposal that the city has, has, has permitted, has has proposed. proposed or presented to staff um, and within that the city hasn't um, responded back to that letter asking or approving that those costs would be approved. So I agree that we've asked the city to cover those costs but I can't wait for that appro approval. So, from the city so this is why I don't like walk on reports because of now I, I'd like to go back to what we approved at the last meeting because my memory has more to what we approved because of I think I made the point that this should be covered by the city and there was general consensus by staff that, that was the case. But I don't know the details anymore and I'd like to take a look at what we approved. Was it in June or was it in May that we approved that? June. And I believe it was endorsement of a letter, and in the letter it referenced the possible the right to reserve an engineer. Yes, yeah, that's um, I think the other thing to expand on it is this initial review by the engineer at this process will help us, will I guess give us the confidence or the information that we need whether it's necessary to have the engineer carry on the project throughout. That will come out of this initial screening. But. Let's step back and why are we doing this? Isn't it because the city would like a better crossing at the Elwood? Well, the bridge is falling apart. Right, I understand. <laughs> but, but I don't think it is to the Conservation Authority's interest to necessarily improve that bridge at this point in time. Yes. Well, it is. It is because the, one of the options was to remove the bridge completely and not have access to the campground that way. So. This is about understanding the report that the consultant that the city has hired. Yeah. Yeah. So I. Yeah. So the motion it said. So I've got the minutes up from the last minute. It says the context. The staff noted the draft letter was missing some final edits. The final bullet on the first page referencing the right to have the final design reviewed by an independent engineer is to be removed. And further, the letter will be co-signed by Joe and Elizabeth. So. But Madam Chair, and just to, to Marcel's concern, just because we proceeded with this initial review by, by the engineer on our behalf so that we can have a meaningful discussion with the city moving forward on the proposed works doesn't prevent us from um, asking or requesting that the, the city pay for that engineer review moving forward as part of the, as part of the proposal. Really out of that is, is part of the review. It's not necessarily the design of the bridge. It's the, the end result is the the, the flow capacity, the, the, the damming aspect is changing. So it's more ensuring that that change is not going to impact our asset being the dam long term. And that's what I was trying to say. It's more the landowner side of protecting our assets to ensure that we're in our review that we're not missing anything crossing our T's and dotting our I's. So the initial step is just to have that engineer desktop review, <coughs> assist us with questions, is everything reasonable? Um, it, what may come out of it is further advice to have the engineer on site and further work, which of course we'd be looking to this value. This is just that first initial review. So that we're confident that our interests as a landowner and a manager of the dam are, are considered. So what is our request or what is the request that's in front of us i'm requesting that you approve um, me approaching Riggs engineering to do that preliminary review of the of the proposal yes i move that request yes, i would second it okay further discussion all in favor 
and that's carried. Okay, section 28. Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, report was in your advanced package, just a small handful of permits issued since the last meeting, uh, a couple of cottage reconstructions. Uh, the municipality, along with the federal government, continues to do their risk management remediation on the uh, East Berm as part of the harbor divestiture, <coughs> and most recently just uh, working with the city to do some erosion control at a, a perched uh, outlet of Mill Creek. So just five permits that we're seeking acknowledgement and concurrence with tonight. All right, we're going to move for our seconder. Dave, Secretary Stephen, all in favor? And that is carried. Things are hopping and put standing. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, will, I will make one comment about, uh, you know, over the years uh, we talk about the dynamic beach mm -hmm. and with Kettle Creek's help and sign, it was back in the days of the village of Port Stanley. And the dynamic beach lines for outline and so on, the importance. And of course, the lake has been low for many years now. Well, two, maybe three weeks ago, there was a major storm that came through. Uh, the winds that were, were sustained for quite a while. Uh, there was glass on the pier that was totally ripped out, uh, for the frames and everything. Uh, on top of which, I, I did not witness this, but uh, the OPP did tell me that the water reached the lifeguard towers, which is considerable wow. distance back. It was a, it was enough mm -hmm. rush, right? Um, wow. But by the next day, the water was back yeah. to normal, right? But it just shows you that you get the winds sustainable from a certain direction, then you will get an uprush. Well, when you've got that much fetch across the lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The last time I saw something like that was in the mid 90s. Thank you, Madam Chair. Would that partially be due to the increase in the level of the water? I'm sure that contributed to it. Um, the levels of the lake of, uh, I forget, I think it's mid 80s since it's been that high, um, if I remember correctly. And it's been sustained. It's, it is now the last time that I checked it. About a week and a half ago, and it had dropped down some, maybe six inches at the most, uh, but it's still very, very high. I know we're confronted with the same problem on our little pier in Port Bruce. It would have just swung right over top of it, yeah. along with the gravel it left behind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need some for roads? <laughs> All right, do we have any other items for open session? All right, can we get a motion to move into in camera? And we have a yep, we will. Chart we'll do, uh, we'll do the motion okay. first. So, what? Okay. Are you okay? Well, I was just going to say that I, I wanted to thank staff. So if this is an business that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing it. Thank you. 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 I went to Lake Wicker on the long weekend just to take a look. I hadn't been in Lake, we Lake Wicker for a long time. And so I introduced myself as a board member and that I just wanted to tour the, the, the Lake Wicker. They were the most helpful and it was, it was a very good visit. Good. Okay. Sure. Okay, motion. And Steve, Dave, go on camera. All in favor? Carrie? We'll take a quick break. Okay. <laughs> uh.